Welcome to a video presentation of Chapter 2, Section 7 in McDougall Littell's 8th grade textbook entitled Distributive Property. We start with the definition of the distributive property. Distributive property. For all numbers A, B, and C, A parentheses, B plus C close parentheses, is equal to AB plus AC and A parentheses, B minus C close parentheses equals A, B minus A, C. Again, for all numbers A, B, and C, A parentheses, <laughs> B plus C is equal to A, B plus A, C, and A parentheses, B minus C is equal to A, B minus A, C. All that really says is that I'm going to take whatever number shows up in front of a set of parentheses and I'm going to carry it through by multiplying it to everything that's inside the parentheses. That's all that rule really says. Now you can see at the bottom of that column I do have one note for you. It's not something you have to do, but I would strongly suggest you do it because if you do it more often you'll get the problem right than wrong. You may want to change subtraction into adding the opposite. That's not an uncommon rule to you. It will probably save you some problems from some problems later on. Now, in examples one, two, three there, right, that's the distributive property with numbers. The distributive property with numbers really doesn't do anything for us. Okay? I'm going to be honest right up front. The reason I start with numbers is because you're good when it comes to just multiplying plain old numbers. Okay? When I throw variables in the mix, some of you start to panic for no reason, but you panic anyway. Okay? So I'm just going to start with numbers. You're going to see when we do these problems that the distributive property really just does us no good when it comes to plain old numbers. And that's truthful. It doesn't do us any good. Okay? It really comes in valuable, it becomes valuable though when we work with variables, like we'll do in examples for 10. So let's start with example one. Okay? Six parentheses, four plus three close parentheses. Alright, if I have six parentheses, four plus three close parentheses, all right, most of you what you would do is you would add four and three first to get seven, then multiply by six. That's not what the distributive property does though, okay? For the distributive property, we carry six through to four, and I carry 6 through 3. Okay. So I've got to do 6 times 4, and I've got to do 6 times 3. Now, what do I do in the middle there? What's the conjoining function? Okay. The conjoining function the conjoining function is the same one we had above it. All right. So since there's addition here, I'm going to bring it straight down so it's there. All right. Now you've just got to do the multiplication and add. So I'm going to do the 6 times 4, which is 24, and the 6 times 3, which is 18, and we have to add those up. All right. If I add 24 and 18, I, of course, get 42. I say again. I know the distributive property does no good with numbers. I totally understand it. But I'm trying to teach it to you with numbers before I throw variables into this. All right. Let's look at example two. Five, and then in parentheses, negative four plus negative seven. All right. So I've got to take the five through to everything that's inside the parentheses. So I've got to take five through to negative four, and I've got to take five through to negative seven. 5 through to negative 4, I multiply 5 and negative 4, and 5 through to negative 7, I multiply 5 and negative 7. Okay. Again, it's addition in the middle because it was addition in the middle of the top. Now you just multiply. 5 times negative 4 would give me negative 20, and 5 times negative 7 would give me negative 35, and we just add those two together, negative 35. All right, 
the last one in that column with numbers says 7, and then in parentheses, 8 minus 5. I did this one to remind you that I have suggested that you change subtraction into adding the opposite, which is exactly how I'm going to start this problem. I'm going to change 8 minus 5 to 8 plus negative 5. Now I can do the distributive property. Again, I take what's in front of the parentheses, I carry it through to everything inside the parentheses. So I've got to do 7 through to the 8, 7 times 8, and I've got to do 7 through to the negative 5, 7 times negative 5. Okay, so what's 7 times 8 going to give me? What? 56. And 7 times negative 5? What? Negative 35, thank you. And when you add those up, you get 21. He gave you. Or can you scoot a little bit to the left? No. <laughs> then I have to nicely. Just slide your desk. I did. No, don't stand at your desk. Slide your desk. But it's fine. All right. Now, starting in example four then. That's where we're going to put variables into the mix. Okay. Same rules, though. There's nothing new here. All right. It's exactly what we did in the last three problems. So take a look at example four. Seven, and then in parentheses, you've got k plus four. Seven, and then in parentheses, k plus four. So just like we did in the last three, seven's got to go through to the k. Seven's got to go through to the four. The nice part about taking seven through to k Right? There's no multiplication to do. When I put 7 with k, you just jam them together. Put them right together. 7 and k, 7 k. So really the only part we're going to have to work on in this one would be the 7 times the 4. And 7 times 4 is going to give me 28. Example five. We like this problem even better because there's a variable on the outside. Well, for some of you, that's going to be panic. The nice part is when there's a variable out there, there's no multiplication really to do at all. It's just going to be take two things and jam them together. Take two things and jam them together. So I've got a, and then in the parentheses, four plus b. So when I take a 